we will um, talk for about half an hour, Diogo and I, um, and, and you hopefully, um, to the extent you'd like to participate. And then we'll stick around for 15 minutes after that at 1.30 Eastern time uh, for those who'd like to stick around after and chat briefly um, or talk individually. Um, and uh, within this 30 minute period, we'll do a couple warm up questions and then uh, Diogo and I have some things to, to chat about and, and share with you all. And then we'll open it up um, in that second half of this half hour. So that's our, that's our plan. Uh, Marco, no worries about being late. This is very informal. This is totally fine. You're not late. You're perfect. Yeah, Hira, good to see you. Zachary, welcome. Um, um, and Becky, everyone who's here, you are welcome. I'm glad to have you. Um, we're going to share a document with you shortly, um, and we're going to run a couple polls, but mainly this is an informal conversation um, about a topic that matters a lot to at least me and, and Diogo, I think, and, and yet we don't often have a a chance to, to talk about it much. So, um, Diogo, do you want to kick us off with just a couple words about your own kind of interest in this topic? Yeah, I think you said it well. I mean, uh, we started doing these sessions, Jeremy and I, because we feel that uh, we don't, people don't talk enough about strategies and tips and tools that we can use for our, our own well being and things that are, that are useful, things that, you know, are simple sometimes and we just don't hear about them. So that's, that's why we're doing the second session. The first one we did, uh, the first one we did uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah. And yeah, we, we yes. talked about general tools about the general know. tools on, on well being, and this time is sleep, which is something that is very dear to me because I sleep. I, I don't sleep very well. I've been struggling with sleep my whole life, and but I find that these little things that that you know you find along the way in your life help you a lot to just, you know, just improve the quality of your sleep overall. How about you, Jeremy? Yeah. So, I mean, to me, it's, it's one of the number one sort of underlying habits. There are a lot of habits that we talk about. I've been reading tiny habits and atomic habits this year and a lot of other kind of habits related writing and thinking, but the number one habit that underlies all other habits in my view is, is the sleep habit. It's the most important to me, single habit. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about it and it's, 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 it's something um, that I think, uh, affects either positively or negatively everything else that we do. Um, so I'll say a few words about that in a moment. I, I want to share the um, the poll results uh, with those who are lower end of the spectrum. Um, a couple of people have fewer, four or fewer hours of sleep. Um, a couple of people are at six or seven, only one at eight or more. Um, and um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's a... Uh, that's something that, that I think affects all of us. Here's another quick poll, quick poll um, which is actually more difficult for you, um, waking up and getting going in the day um, during this pandemic or, or, or falling asleep at night. What's your, uh, what's your experience? You can answer that poll quickly on, on uh, Zoom. Um, um, for me, uh, they're, they're different, differently challenging at different times, depending on the day. Um, if, uh, if I haven't gotten enough sleep, obviously waking up is, is particularly challenging. And, and um, if, uh, if the pandemic is weighing on me, then going to sleep can be particularly challenging. Um, I want to jump into the Google Doc um, to share some specific resources with folks. So um, let's paste in the link here. Um, oh, great. Thanks, um, Diogo. So Diogo just posted in the, in the chat box um, the, uh, the, the, the document we're going to share with you. And uh, we're just going to walk through a th few things, um, specific things that have been useful for us. Um, I always find it useful in sessions like this to to learn from other people what's working for other people. And so we want to do that same thing and share what's been useful for us and, and get your input and what's been useful for you. Um, I'm going to share back the response to this poll. And uh, people are uh, on the challenge falling asleep side of things, um, which is my experience. Now, these are each are differently challenging in, in different ways. And the weather, as, as uh, Marco mentions, the, the weather also affects this, right? Winter. Um, it's different for, for me than during the summer yeah. um, as well. Um, Diogo, do you want to start us off on this on this document? Just kind of walk through a couple things that, that you noted here that have been useful for you. Sure. Yeah, uh, I want to start with the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Uh, I have it right here. It's in Portuguese, but it's the same basic book. And I think it's very useful. Uh, it, it has been very useful uh, reading this book for me because and he does, he, he, he just gives you an overview of how our sleep works and the things that are, 
uh, that affect it, the hormones that are at play when you're, when, you, when you're sleepy or when you're not sleepy, when you're waking up, you know, he explains the difference between the circadian, circadian rhythm and, you know, melatonin and how the, the, these separate aspects affect our sleep. And I think it's a very good starting point for people who, are, who have trouble sleeping or are interested in the subject to start understanding the more technical aspects of it. It's not a difficult book. Uh, I just want to say that it's, he gets technical, but he explains everything very well. And he, but he also shares uh, strategies that he, he himself has tried and, and his patients and people that he has been re researching with. Uh, things like, you know, uh, drinking uh, decaf coffee, something that I, I have been doing for a couple of months, uh, more than a couple of months, and that has really, really helped me uh, to sleep better at night because I'm really addicted to caffeine and I really like to drink coffee. But, you know, if you drink any, if you drink a lot of coffee after 12, after, you know, noon, you, the caffeine just stays in your system and it's harder for your body to get rid of it. So decaf just gives you a little bit of more of space uh, it makes you less uh, caffeinated for the rest of the day and therefore you can fall asleep. Yeah, one thing, uh, just to jump way. in on that, just to jump in on that point, um, uh, I, I, I was surprised to learn in that book that the, that the what, do they, what do you call it, the half-life the half life of the caffeine, the, the length, half -life. yeah, the, uh, the dissipation rate is, is such that you actually have to kind of stop 10 hours before bed. I mean, on, for, for kind of a typical person, that's what the recommendation was. Um, which to me was really surprising. So even the afternoon bubble tea that I used to have um, was not well advised. Apparently, um, in terms of you know maximizing the 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 preparation for for effective sleep and quality sleep. And and what I also learned from that, which I thought was interesting, was like even if you're falling asleep, you may not be having the quality of sleep in the first couple hours exactly. of the night that you that you hadn't thought a lot about. I assumed that if I was falling asleep, that was fine. Um, but actually, if I was consuming screen time or or caffeine, you know, tea, um, which is my caffeine of choice typically, or, or was, um, in addition to chocolate, which I hadn't thought about as a caffeine delivery mechanism, but it is. Um, uh, so anyway, so so I didn't realize that, I, that 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 early in the day, I had to stop consuming caffeine um, for it to, to make an impact or at least reduce. Um, the book, one, one of the books that I, I really have liked is this uh, My Morning Routine book um, that I put on this doc. And, and what I like about it um, is just shows the variety of different approaches people have. Um, and uh, this is something that I think is useful just because a lot of times I think we think something we're doing is strange or odd or something we want to do seems not prescribed. And what I found in this book was the morning routine book is how many different ways very successful people approach the morning. Um, and I found that helpful because I could sort of uh, find other people that were doing something and say, okay, you know, they do that. I think I can follow that model. This other person does this thing, like waking up at 3.39 a.m. and I can't do that. And I don't want to do that. Um, but it sort of gave me a, a, a menu of different models to choose from and, and show how those people approach the morning, which I found really useful. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and that, that, lead, that, uh, um, that uh, leads me to one other thing that I shared is, is, is the, the habit that I have, that I have, you know, developed, so to speak, is, is, is reading a book over breakfast, because it's something that, I, that it, it just helps me start, you know, I'm very slow, wake, I just wake up very slowly, my mind just takes, you know, a couple hours to get into gear. And uh, reading is something, reading something deep, not, you know, just your cell phone, or the news is something that it helps me, brings me into the day. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can satisfy that necessity of having something in my hands and maybe, you know, getting some information. That's something that I'm addicted to as well. But I'm reading a book. I'm reading something that is longer, long, long form reading, you know, the, 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 the you know, it's deeper. And it's something that it's really helped me that these, these, these last few months because, you know, I get my reading done and also, you know, I don't start doom scrolling, I don't read, you know, tweets and things that make me anxious uh, right, right you know, in the first hours of the day. I want to pose the question to the group. What's been most helpful to you in your morning routine? Um, and I'm sending, I'm pasting in um, the, uh, the, uh, the link to the poll on this. Um, and uh, we're using Slido for this. If, if you haven't used Slido, it's just a simple polling tool. And the reason we do that, as opposed to the um, chat here or the Zoom polls, it's anonymous and, and you can um, write out an actual sentence. So um, you can share anything that's been useful to you 
in your morning routine um, with that Slido link um, poll link, so we can see some of um, you know a couple things that have been useful to to others. Um, for me, one thing that's been useful um, morning wise is just this idea of um, atomic habits and micro habits, tiny habits, things that I can do that aren't ambitious and actually are, are the opposite are super simple. So for example, just doing a couple of stretch stretches when I wake up like immediately on the floor um, and just like literally one minute of that. So I used to think that I had to kind of go for a morning run or do something really vigorous for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And I, I just wasn't able to do that for a variety of reasons. In many cases, I have two little girls and I just wouldn't have morning time for that um, in many cases. But, um, but what I found is if I commit to doing a minute of, of stretching, for example, um, that's a huge help. Um, the other morning thing that I've um, taken to doing is um, morning pages, um, starting with some sort of writing um, when I actually get to my work um, desk, as it were, or the screen. So just taking a minute and just writing something. Um, sometimes it's a thought about a column I'm working on for my newsletter. Sometimes it's a thought about something, a document I'm working on for something I'm teaching or writing, um, but just writing something. Um, and, and again, the minimal requirement is just a minute, just putting something down for a minute. Typically, I'll end up going longer than that, but just kind of reducing the requirements I have for myself make it possible for me to, to commit to, to, to doing that consistently. Do you find that that makes you like makes your day start, you know, smooth in a smoother way or what good does it do to you to do that? Yeah, I find that it, first of all, it gets me, it gives me some momentum. It also, um, it follows the sort of daffodil principle. I heard this story recently. I won't bore everyone with a long story. Um, you can look it up um, or I can look it up and share the link um, with you. But the, the basic concept is if you do anything consistently every single day, it's a, there's a tremendous power to that over time. And that's a principle that seems like obvious or common sense maybe, but it, it actually in practice is challenging to do because mostly when people commit to something, they commit to something that they can't actually do every day. So I've been trying to accumulate tiny habits that I can commit to every day consistently that include uh, you know, the minute of stretching, right? They include the minute of writing. They include um, what I call good things. Um, journaling, which is essentially writing down at the end of each day a few good things, and that's an arbitrary and subjective um, designation, but it's essentially things that made me smile during the day, things that I'm happy about, things that I'm pleased with, things that I'm grateful for. It's a combination of those things, and it's just a couple things, and I do it on paper so I get away from the screen and so I don't feel like um, I have to do it digitally. I can just I have a notebook, and I have a single dedicated mm -hmm. notebook for it. Um, it's a, it's a six dollar Amazon blank you know notebook that I write you know at least a couple lines in. Some people you know do this one minute journal thing. Um, my wife does a five year journal. Each day it's one line, and the same journal you use for five years. So it's like November. What's today's date? November twenty fourth, two thousand twenty. And then right below it, you see what you did two thousand nineteen. So you can sort of look back on a year from a year ago, and then. You know, the next year you'll look back on two years. Um, so that's that's a that's a nice um, thing for me as well as those those little little daily habits. That's nice. I want to point out the uh, couple things people have shared on. I'm going to share my screen. A um, couple people have shared things that have been useful to you. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and just show that in the Slido poll. Um, and here you can see um, playing with cat. Um, that's a nice thing with a pet, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, we can't necessarily be next to or with all the people that we love in our lives and that we want to see. Um, but those we can, this opportunity kind of gives us a chance to spend more time with them or more close time. Um, glass of water and listen to music. Um, that's great. Um, yeah, glass of water is a good thing in the morning, right? Because we, we spend eight hours essentially or whatever number of hours being parched, right? And, and our body needs yeah. that when we wake up I drink I drink one of these like right after I wake up just the whole thing because huh. I'm so parched <laughs> do you do cold water or room temperature yeah I don't know. no just room temperature yeah I just uh, fill it up on the tap and just just drink it nice yeah exercising uh -huh. online exercise community so I'm curious about that I would love to hear if someone's willing That's to cool. whoever put that is willing to put in the chat or, or unmute and share a little bit about that because I've been really intrigued by the idea of I've just used YouTube videos 
or the seven minute workout, but I'd love to hear about how that community yeah. part works online. That sounds great. I would love to join that because exercising by yourself is so hard. Yeah. Well, that, the last one, I like take care, take care of the house, performing tasks that, to that. And that's what I do too. I wake up and I do the dishes. I make a, I make the bed and I wet my dog's grass because she has a little grass thing for her to use as a bathroom. And that just helps, you know, also to start the day and do things. You know, you accomplish things and then it just go off, you know, yeah. uh, you go by your day. Yeah. The Before that's Breakfast good. podcast, which I listened to, Laura Vanderkam, it's a wonderful podcast if anyone's interested. Um, before breakfast, it's called, she does four minutes, three to four minutes a day with a quick thing. And one of the things she talked about was kind of picking one thing, again, not a brand new solution, right? People have done this before, but these are ideas that sometimes are helpful to hear again. And she 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 uh, kind of has this guidance around doing one little thing home care wise, like in your room, picking one thing, one particular shelf for that day or one particular whatever area of the, the corner of the room to, to clean up. Um, and, and I like that idea of, of kind of like put, putting order around a disorderly world in, in the small ways that we can. Um, I think Kelly mentioned about that you said that was you about the online exercise and you don't mind sharing. Would you mind unmuting and just tell us a little bit about that online exercise uh, community if you, if you wouldn't mind? If you're, if you're, if you're willing, if you're able to, to share a little bit about that. Maybe I can't, I can't hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess we can't hear you, Kelly. You're, you're not yeah. muted. You're not muted, but maybe the audio isn't working. Um, but if you can't, if the audio doesn't work, you can maybe t type in a little bit more about that. Um, yeah. And I like, I like what you said, by the way, about in the chat about doing, or what have you done 100 or more times this year? Because that's the direction your life is going in. Um, and the way the phrase was, was resonate, resonate with you. And I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, that's a, a nice way to think about it. Another way that, um, in Atomic Habits, um, James Clear writes that uh, if you do something once, you know, give yourself a break. Like it's okay if you, you know, miss your bedtime or you break your your positive routine, you break the chain, as it were, right? In that in that lingo, um, you do something you didn't mean to do, or you adopt a bad habit that you've been trying to get rid of. But if you do it twice, he says, then you're starting a new habit. So he sort of said, he, which I thought was a nice, I, I like that idea. It sort of allows for the human kind of element where we, we go off track for a day, um, but that it, it also emphasizes the importance of getting back on track and not having two days consecutively in the wrong direction. Um, that's okay, Kelly, no problem on the sound. Um, sometimes we live in a Zoom world with strange Zoom uh, issues. Um, does anyone else want to chime in on, on this issue of, uh, of morning routines or, or something that's been useful to you? Um, elaborate on anything you put in the Slido or, or just add anything. Um, feel free to, to, uh, to unmute and, and just chime in and, and jump in. We'll add your voice to the conversation. Um, and I'll read Ke Kelly's for anyone who's not seeing the chat. Um, Betty, Betty Rocker, that's cool. That's a, an online exercise community. 30-day um, programs, that's great. So you just follow the program. Yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. It's it's nice to minimize the the number of decisions one has to make in the day, and if, if the if the program tells you this is what's next, it's it's nice to be able to follow that. Yeah, and, and people always say like this: people are specialized in habits, and even people in meditation say that whenever you have a group of people that are doing things with you, have a community, it's always easier to you know just keep doing it and not fall off the wagon when you have other people, not, not only to, you know, to be accountable for, but also, you know, to encourage you whenever you, you just feel like you don't want to do it or feel disencouraged. Yeah. I think having a social commitment that you make makes a big difference. There's a lot of that in the habits books, you know, having a running partner is an example, right? It's easier to say no to yourself than it is to say no to your running partner who you've promised to meet in the morning, for example, or exercise partner. Um, uh, another thing for me, the way that one, Way that that works is I, I host a book group for seniors and and uh, the the thing the thing that I like about that is well I like many things about it I really enjoy the group and the members and the discussions are really um, wonderful to have when we're in this political moment to talk about things that are timeless and, and books and literature um, but in terms of the habit component of it one thing I like is that it really gets it ensures that I keep reading like an, another commitment I have every day is to read at least for, for 10 to 20 minutes at minimum. Um, sometimes I do more than that and sometimes I don't do more than that. And, but, but 
but having the book group each month as a commitment ensures that I have a target and have a goal and have a specific thing that is external that I need to commit to and be ready for. Um, I want to shift the, the poll question just to get people's input on the next one um, about uh, the, your bedtime routine. So you shared things that have been helpful um, in the morning routine. I'm curious if people would share things and, and I just put up the Slido um, for that bedtime routines. Again, this is these are anonymous and here's the link again in the chat and you can share anything that's been useful in your uh, bedtime routine. And maybe um, Henry Diogo, do you want to say another word about that for from your own perspective? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the doc, I, I, I put up a link for the body scan meditation, which is something that whenever I, I have a really hard time sleeping, I try to do either with an audio or just by myself because I've done it so many times that I can kind of like direct myself. And I think it's a very nice way to try to fall asleep because, well, first it connects you to your body and that for, for people who have a hard time falling asleep, that is very helpful, you know, just to feel your body, feel your, your legs. And, you know, it's very simple, nothing really mystical about it. Just feeling uh, each part of your body separately for, you know, just a small amount of time and breathing along with it and trying to, you know, just let go of tensions and everything. I think it's a very good practice. Uh, I know that it's, that it's widely used in, in, in uh, meditation programs that are uh, uh, aimed at relieving stress, people who are chronically stressed, have depression or chronic anxiety. And uh, it's a very good technique. Uh, it's, it's based on Buddhist uh, meditation, but it's also very useful for anything. I mean, for anyone who is interested in just relaxing a little bit. And before sleep is perfect because it's kind of like counting sheep, you know, just when you, I mean, it, it usually ends at the head, but uh, well, normally I just, you know, fall asleep before I get to my chest. So it's a very good way of falling asleep and slowing down your mind a little bit. What about yours? You, you, you were talking about the, the white noise machine, right? Yeah. That's something yeah. That we, we don't really have here in Brazil. Yeah, so I actually have it with me. Um, it's a, it's Dome is the brand D-O-H-M, but there are other brands too, I'm sure. Um, and it's very simple. I'll, I'll play you the sound. And if you can hear that. Yeah. That's the louder version. Um, is that like the wind? It's kind of, yeah, it's just a generic sort of white noise sound. And um, it, for me, it's particularly useful in New York City. I'm not in the city right now, but when I am, it's particularly useful because there's a lot of sort of random extraneous noises that sort of pop up and can interrupt your, your falling asleep. Um, here, I'm outside the city a couple hours and it's more like nature sounds um, that tend to crop up or, or just house sounds um, that crop up. Um, so it's it's yeah it's just a nice way to kind of like have a consistent room tone in a way when you're falling asleep i find and, and during the night um so yeah that's been that's been particularly helpful the other thing that's been really helpful for me um i put in here a link to the headspace on sleep um uh resource which i call watch the movie the other day one of so i do pretty much many nights i now do the the sort of 10 minute fall asleep um, headspace meditation there's also ones on calm that i use I use both those apps and um, I kind of alternate just for variety. And uh, they, they do a couple things in those routines. You don't necessarily need the app to, to do it, but, um, but they do a couple things. One, which you mentioned, the body scan kind of thing. The other is, well, one of the others is um, going back through the day and sort of reflecting on the day in a kind of peaceful way and just kind of viewing the day as if it were a movie um and kind of just not viewing every single moment but kind of key moments throughout the day and i find that helps me kind of put to rest the day and come to peace with the day and kind of just also enjoy a couple of the moments from the day again um and yeah it just sort of gets settles my mind because otherwise a lot of those thoughts are ruminations and ruminating and this kind of has a way of settling uh settling me and, and the voice um is calming and it kind of helps you get into the focus on breathing and not focus on, you know, whatever you're stressing about or whatever I'm thinking about is coming up the next day. So um, I never did that before the pandemic, really. I never had that routine of listening to these short meditations, mm -hmm. but now it's become kind of part of my part of my routine. Yeah, Mia mentions she, she uses the white noise machine. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think it's also an issue with families and couples. Like people have different ways of sleeping and different preferences, and so that can be that can be a challenge um, sometimes. 
um, as Mitch, Mitch alludes to, to that kind of challenge, I think. Um, I'm curious, Mitch, also about your point about the monk's guide to a clean house in mind and this point about cleaning your face with water only. I'm curious about what the what the idea behind that is or, or what, what your experience has been with that, if you're willing to, to share about that. Hey, Jeremy. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good. Good to talk to you face to face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just took this book out of the library. Um, it's um, the, the key point that he makes in the book, it's written by a monk, is um, just, and, and he's not the first person to, to write about it, but it's just to do things, you know, with full attention and mindfully. So the idea of like getting up in the morning, cleaning your face with water, well, that wasn't something new to me, but the idea of slowing down and actually doing it and taking 30 seconds to do it with attention, just the idea of slowing down slowing down is helpful for me mm. when I remember to do it and slowing down, just doing something as basic as cleaning your face starts that process of slowing things down. And then the yoga routine that I put in, it's also a very slow kind of meditative, gentle routine. And I find that because I'm so hyper and my mind's always racing and I'm always thinking about things, Anything that I can do to slow things down really helps. So yeah. doing things slower and with more attention is the common thread here, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a really nice insight. And I like the way you describe that. I, I interviewed Amos Oz once many years ago, the great writer, great Israeli novelist. And he said to me, anything worth doing is worth doing slowly. Hmm. And I love that comment, and I and I and I've thought about it a lot, and I, I totally agree with you that when you slow down, you're more mindful about something, you notice it more. There's a a new book which Alara Vanderkam has been talking about in her Before Breakfast podcast. I think it's called Everyday Mindfulness, but I'm not sure if that's the right title. And she alludes to this idea of kind of uh, noticing smaller things that we typically do without thinking. You know, washing hands is an example of that, um, and. Uh, there's probably a hundred different things we do every day that we kind of barely think about, right? Because we do them so routinely and finding ways of kind of stopping and noticing those is probably a way of slowing down time a little bit. Something that you mentioned that I really like that I sporadically do and you reminded me to get back to it is the idea of getting away from the screen and mm -hmm. writing on paper in your notebook. Like, because I'm just, like so many people, I'm just spending too much time like in front of the screen. It's like I'm addicted to it. Ironically, <laughs> your newsletter, which I've told you I love, like every time it shows up in my inbox, I click on it like first because there's so much cool stuff in it. Um, at the same time, I then go on this rabbit hole because I got to check out all your tools and I've just spent another hour in front of the screen. <laughs> I so it's like paradox, like I'm addicted to it, but then I think, do I really need to be spending all this time on all these tools, more time in front of the screen? So thank you. Well, thanks for that. To... Yeah. Okay, thanks. Cool. Thanks for your nice words. I appreciate that. I, 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 um, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I certainly am someone who loves tools and loves playing with them and I can definitely go down rabbit holes till the, you know, the sun comes down and I have to actually kind of, div, you know, allocate it to myself like a treat and almost, you know, like I can give myself a square of chocolate now and then and I give myself a block of time to just play online. And, um, but I think, I think the challenge is sort of being intentional about it and sort of saying to yourself, you know, it's fine to do it now, but, but when it comes for me, the big thing I have to, I had to, and actually, um, Diogo, I think you helped me with this, you kind of use my phone, set my phone limits more rigorously toward the end of the day. So I actually have like a set sort of bed, my phone basically starts blocking me. Um, yeah. and, uh, and I hadn't really used that as much in the past. And for anyone who's interested in that, um, you know, it's the do not disturb on your settings on the iPhone. And, and I think Android has a similar thing. Um, and so it, it literally locks me out at, at, at uh, 10.30 um, every night. So, um, 
So that's something that's been useful to me. Um, I said we would end at, at, at 1.30 and kind of let people stick around if they want to or not, if they prefer not to, if they've got to move on. So I want to honor that and then just reiterate that we have this document um, that we put in the, in the uh, notes. Um, and we can drop in the link one more time for anyone who wants to, to, to have that. And uh, in case that's useful for, for you all. Um, and thanks for, thanks for those of you who joined. Last thing I want to mention that's in the document, actually, I, I neglected to mention is this five minute journal, um, which I haven't been using lately. I'll, I'll admit to that. I, I, I didn't bring it with me in this pandemic uh, escape that I made. Um, but it, it, it's a nice journal that just asks you simple questions which are included in this, I, I included in the document, which is um, what I'm grateful for, what would make today great, and a couple of daily affirmations. You do that in the morning. And then at the end of the day, you say three amazing things that happened today and what, how, how could I have made my day better? Um, and so it's a way of kind of like putting bookends on the day. And, uh, and each, each day has sort of this, you know, the, the, this, um, just these individual page, basically. Um, and you could just make your own. You don't need to buy the fancy one, but um, but yeah, um, I found that I found that useful to have, like just to have it to to just have something to complete at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, over breakfast, and then before bed. Um, so in case that's useful for people, um, yeah. And Matt um, Matt mentions about the do not disturb settings. Actually, one thing I just found recently about that is um, you can customize it by app. So I had assumed that all the apps had to be off at 10:30 and and or whatever time, and actually then I realized okay I'm using Headspace and Calm, so I want to leave those on. So I realized I can actually customize it by app, which is which is helpful. Um, yeah, and, and on Android, I think it, on, on on iPhone is the same thing. You can even like uh, assign special contacts like your favorites that will go through if they call you or just yes. send you any messages, yep. like you know my, my mom and. People like that who, if they need to talk to me, or, uh, they will reach me. So that's very useful too, because you just put your mind at ease that nothing, you know, if you, if you need to hear some news, you're going to hear it. And the other things are just going to go, you know, going to go to like whatever. You're not going to go through and you're going to be able to put your, your phone down for a little bit before you go to sleep. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone has any, has any questions or anything you want us to address. I'm going to share... Um, screen for some of the suggestions um, that um, that folks shared about the bedtime routine. And then if anyone has any questions or you want to add anything, um, uh, or if you need to hop off, you're totally fine. Thank you for coming. We're, we're going to wrap up in 10 minutes for good, but if anyone wants to stick around with us, you're welcome to. Um, these are some things that people shared in terms of their nighttime routines. Um, writing thoughts, yeah. Definitely, I think anything that prevents the mind from sort of raging, you know, raging on its own. I think putting things down on paper helps with that. Yeah, instrumental music. I, I actually I actually have started alternating. I, I have tons of podcasts that I haven't been able to keep up with, but I started alternating between podcasts and um, kind of YouTube playlists and classical stuff that I, that I love listening to because I found that if I have too much input, it's 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 adding to my brain going over you know overcharge, and uh, if I if I can periodically step outside of the verbal words thing by listening to music, that's an important important break. Diogo, do you alternate between podcasts and music in terms of your listening? Uh. Well, uh, at night I try not to listen to anything because everything just makes me, you know, really hyper music, even even instrumental music. Uh, so at night I just try to, you know, watch something very, you know, mindless, you know, thing something that I already know or I've already seen, so I don't won't get excited or you know want to want to know what's going to happen next. So I just you know end up watching The Simpsons or Friends or. Um, Modern Family, things that I've already seen a thousand times, just, you know, just to to just you know turn shut my mind off a little bit, yeah. not think about things too much. Because if I listen to a podcast, even if it's like a, a calm podcast or anything, I'm just gonna get ideas and things that I should yeah. write about on my newsletter or. <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> and a book that I want to read or something like that. So I don't need any new information at night. It's just this old information is good enough for me. Yeah. You know, like someone, someone's bad, they listen to like a, a favorite audiobook so they go to sleep because they don't really have to pay attention. That's the same spirit. Like yeah. you just you don't have to do it. Your mind is not doing any real effort, just you know, just watching something, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. That's really that's a nice way to, to describe that. Um, I'm curious whoever put that the Charlene Harris Suki Stackhouse. I'm curious who that is or what that what what what's uh, what you like about that author. I've I've never heard of that author, so I'm interested in that. Um, I'm also curious about this linden tea that using leaves and flowers. That those are both really interesting things. Um, uh, okay, True Blood books. Okay, interesting. I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, uh, that sounds interesting. I, although I, I have to say I'm not a horror person. I've never watched a horror movie and I never plan to, <laughs> nor a horror book. I have enough ch enough things I'm afraid of in real life to, to add them to add the movies to that. Um, uh, True, Blood, True Blood was a lot of fun. Is that, horror, is that horror or what's the genre? It's horror mixed with a little bit of humor, with a little bit okay. of mystery. It's, okay. it's, it's fun. It's Urban fun. fantasy, yeah. okay. okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, and and I, I don't know who who was the linden um, leaves flowers things that that sounds really interesting. I'd like to hear more about that. Um, my daughters were playing with putting different spices, I mean different um, herbs rather, uh, together like mint and and basil and parsley and things like that. But uh, but we didn't try putting them in tea. But but linden leaves that sounds that sounds nice. Um, does anyone have any thoughts? Anyone else want to jump in on this conversation in the last couple of minutes or ask us anything? Um, Anything that's on your mind or any suggestions you want to share or any other input in this la the last few minutes here? You can put it in the chat or you can just unmute if you want to jump in. Well, I just want, I want to say one thing that I- Yeah, please. Uh, I started doing because of the of, of Matthew Walker's book is I, I, I used to drink like, you know, Coke Zero uh, on lunch and now uh, because of the, all the caffeine intake i switched to tonic water yeah. that's something that, that that's been game changing for me because one i don't i don't drink any caffeine either at night i uh, i would drink coke at night so that would disrupt my sleep a little bit and i don't drink as much you know uh, like i used to, uh, i could drink like a many cups of coke because it's just so easy and then and it's it's made to like make you addicted a little bit mm -hmm. and tonic water is just bitter <laughs> It's unsweetened, it's bitter, and it just stop drinking one one can, and that's more than enough for the night. And you don't feel like eating anything else afterward. If people like have a compulsion at night, like I do, you know, you want to eat something sweet or after dinner, you know, you're, yeah. you're just winding down. That's been, you know, apart from the caffeine, it's it's given it's given me that that the I, I slow down on eating too. That's nice. Um, yeah, there, there's one, one thing I want to mention about that with, uh, with the food habits. One thing I've tried to do, I, I've, I, I may have mentioned this to you before, Diogo, I have a, a hunker, hankering for uh, potato chips and, and also chocolate. Those are like dark chocolate. I don't eat milk chocolate, but dark chocolate and potato chips and salty snacks. And so like, and then I have a moderate amount, but I've been trying to reduce that. And so one of the things I've been doing is sort of having a rule for myself, like I have one fruit type thing first and then i'm able to have as much as i want and the reality is oftentimes if i have a nice green apple with peanut butter or a banana with peanut butter those are my like fruit snacks of choice um then i'm much less eager to have the other stuff actually it just sort of states satisfying yeah. enough that i kind of have less desire for it sometimes i still might but overall like the overall consumption of it is like declined just because of that um, the other thing is, I, I, I read this somewhere, and I don't remember where it was, maybe in, I can't remember, but there's this idea that like taking a moment when I have this, this urge, like to grab some chocolate or grab this salty snack or whatever, and just kind of like pause a minute, like basically like breaking the direct connection between the stimulus and the response. So I basically just pause and kind of recognize that feeling and recognize that urge or that desire or that sensation. Yeah. And just like be, sit with that for a second, like literally a few seconds. And sometimes I still have it because I decide, okay, yeah, I'm fine. I haven't had, you know, much chocolate in the last couple of days 
right? Or, or whatever, you know? Uh, but other times I'm kind of like, you know what? I don't actually need it. I'm not actually doing it because I want it. I'm just doing it as like a reflex. And, uh, and so that also, those, those two things have to, have to kind of reduce my consumption. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that because that's how, that's one of the things that I used to stop smoking. I used to smoke like 10 years ago. And my doctor said, just keep, keep a bottle of water near you. And whenever hmm. you feel like smoking, drink water. Interesting. And that's, that's why I always have water with me because it's something that I just incorporated, incorporated from, you know, from when I was trying to quit smoking and I, and I did it. And it really helps because like you said, like you, you just interrupt the, 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 the cycle and you, you, and you drink the water and you just do something with your mouth. Like something, sometimes you just want to do that. You know, just want a, a quick thrill, right. so to speak. Right. And you know, the water just makes your stomach full and you, you did something and yeah, it, huh. it helped me a lot. And That's Nancy is talking about inertia on, on taking herself uh, taking herself to bed and uh and i think that that's that's one thing that my my partner tatiana has helped me a lot because she sleeps very early and i and i like made a point of going to bed even if i'm not going to sleep going to bed whenever she does mm. because that helps me not you know get stuck on on, on my computer by myself you know she's yeah. sleeping and i'm in the living room by myself and i just go to bed and i might take like an hour to sleep but i'm just lying down slowing down and that's that's been helpful you know in a dark room that's one thing. I don't know if you have any anybody to help you with that, Nancy, but maybe establishing some kind of, you know, threshold routine or, you know, something that will make you go to bed that, that, that can be helpful. Yeah, I have a couple of thoughts. I mean, things that I've been sort of trying in different ways. One is thinking of the bedtime as the start of the next day. So just sort of switching my frame of reference for the bedtime and instead of thinking about it as something where I'm kind of ending this day and I didn't get to do this and I still want to do that. I start to think now about tomorrow and sort of setting myself up for tomorrow and that bedtime is sort of beginning of that. And sometimes I find that helps me just thinking about it differently. Another is um, saving certain things that I only let myself do in bed or right before bed. So, you know, sometimes I'll have some uh, New Yorker cartoons or something that I like reading in the New Yorker that I'll sort of save and I'll kind of give myself that as a pleasurable thing that I can do when I'm getting ready for bed. And um, and it's, or or listening to a particular podcast that's just funny or light, um, or, or doing something else that I kind of um, wouldn't wouldn't otherwise spend time on, um, and associating that with bedtime. So it kind of like gives me a reason to to do that early. Um, but um, yeah, Pat's also yeah, mentioning a a guy a, an idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think also that the, the fact that my device is now shut down, it's, it's 1030 and my laptop and my phone both are basically like, sorry, end of day. And it's almost like a bed. It's almost like the opposite of a morning alarm, like a wake up alarm. It's like a bedtime alarm. And I can I can cancel it and stuff like that. But I, it tends to function for me as like, OK, and uh, and that 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 has been a bit a bit helpful. Um, that is. So, well, we should, we should wrap. We said 145. Um, it's now 145. Uh, uh, thanks everyone for coming, for showing up. I hope there's been something interesting for you. It's been, uh, I always find it pleasurable talking to you, Diogo. So, um, Me too, it's, it's been, Thank you for this. It's, it's been fun. And, and, uh, yeah. Up. Yeah. Thanks everyone. And, and, you know, I feel like it's just nice to have moments to talk about stuff that people don't usually talk about. Um, these kind of between the cracks things about life. Um, and this is, this is an example of some of the stuff that that uh, we can remotely or for this pandemic connect with one another even a little bit on that. That's, that's a nice thing. So um, yeah, 30 minute naps, you hire, that's a cool thing too. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to find moments for, for short naps and I haven't been able to do that lately, but that's cool. Well, anyway, thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I hope um, everyone has a, has a really meaningful and, and fruitful um, weekend and, and holiday if you're celebrating the holiday. And, um, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Bye. Bye-bye.